Hi everyone, my name is Mr. Watson and in this video I'm going to be giving you an overview and a little bit of context on the poem My Last Duchess, which was written by Robert Browning. This poem is part of AQA's GCSE English Literature Power and Conflict Syllabus and it takes the form of a dramatic monologue given by a duke as he recounts what happened to his previous wife. So the poem is based on historical fact. The poem is preceded by Ferrara, indicating that the speaker is most likely Alfonso II de Este, the fifth duke of Ferrara, who, at the age of 25, married Lucrezia di Cosimo di Medici, the 14-year-old daughter of Cosimo I di Medici, Grand Duke of Tuscany. He then abandoned her for two years before she died on the 21st of April, 1561, at age 17. The Duke then sought the hand of Barbara, eighth daughter of the Holy Roman Emperor Ferdinand I and the sister of the Count of Tyrol, Ferdinand II. The Count was in charge of arranging the marriage. The chief of his entourage, Nicholas Madrus, was his courier. Madrus, from Innsbruck, is presumably the silent listener in the poem. And something else that is quite interesting to add to the context here is that Robert Browning visited Italy in 1838, four years before the poem was published. And while he was there, he probably saw the portrait of Lucrezia in Mantua. So in terms of the poem itself, the Duke is the speaker of the poem and he is negotiating his marriage to a daughter of another powerful family. He's negotiating with and delivering the monologue to a representative of this family. He takes his guest on a tour of his private art collection, boasting about certain pieces that were crafted by famed artists and sculptors just for him. He stops in front of a painting of his former wife and begins to reminisce about her. As his monologue continues, we learn that he became furious with how the Duchess behaved, accusing her of flirting with other men and not showing him or his family name the respect that he believed they deserved. The Duke continues his monologue and it becomes clear that it was the Duke himself who ordered the death of the Duchess. After making this point to his visitor, he returns to focus on the business at hand, although he doesn't miss the opportunity to point out yet another bespoke piece of art as he leads his guest out of the art gallery. So here are four key themes that are explored in My Last Duchess. The first one, and probably the most obvious one, is power. The Duke abuses his power as a powerful man in order to have the Duchess killed. But it can also be interpreted to be a lack of power. The Duke wants control over the Duchess. He wants to control everything that she does. And when she isn't letting him do that, he loses that power, he loses that authority over her. And so in order to get it back, he orders her death. Feeding into that is the theme of jealousy. It's quite clear that the Duke becomes incredibly jealous of the other men who the Duchess is showing affection to. He interprets her encounters with other men as being flirtatious, even when it's very likely that they weren't and she was just being polite. But this manifested a jealousy within him, which grew and grew and grew into the next theme, which is hatred. That jealousy becomes this hatred, the hatred of how she acts, the hatred of how other men interacted with her and how she then responded to them. The fact that she accepted gifts off them and the fact that she, you know, in his opinion, looked at him the same way that she looked at them which to him was out of order because he was her husband and he should have had this kind of special treatment from her. And all of this plays into this idea of arrogance as well. The fact that he believed he was better than everybody else. He was better than all the other men and he was better than her, that she should do what he says. And arrogance is also very clearly on display when he's showing off his art collection. He's boasting to his guest who's representing another powerful family, he's boasting about who made the different sculptures and paintings. 
He even name drops a few times famous sculptors and artists. Again, it's a, it's a form of arrogance. It's a form of, oh, look at me. Look at how good I am. Look at who I know. Look at who painted and made these pieces of art just for me. He's showing off effectively. And it's also worth considering the fact that he says all of this to a representative of his potential next wife. And in one way, it almost comes across as a warning. It's almost like the Duke is, is giving a kind of subtle warning to this family that if he does marry the daughter and the daughter crosses the line that he believed his previous wife did, then she might meet the same fate. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please leave a like. And if you haven't subscribed, please feel free to do that as well so you don't miss any future videos from me. Thank you very much for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye for now.